Hi, I'm Fred McNeil, and thank you for watching QAC TV 7. Have we got a special show today? You know, normally we have county commissioners, elected people, but something happened in Queen Anne's County in the last week is fantastic. We have two state champions from Queen Anne's County High School. These are teams that won state championship games. I don't think this has happened in this county since the 1950s when it happened at old Centerville High School. So let me introduce John Marquette, who is the uh, administrator in charge of sports at Queen Anne's County High School. John, thank you. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Okay. Now, who are these great coaches I have over to the left of me? Well, you are uh, right there is <laughs> Kim Betts, who is our softball coach, and we have Kesley Fitzgerald, our uh, girls lacrosse coach. And they're now coaches of a state championship team. Yes, they are. And they're going to get banners up in the gym and everything? There'll be banners in a parade. And we're going to talk about the parade by the end of the show. Okay. Now, let's do this. I've been told to do this in chronological order, Coach. All right. <laughs> you won the first state championship. No pressure across, no pressure. <laughs> Tell me about this wonderful softball team you had, Coach. Um, well, it was a phenomenal year. You know, last year, um, I remember gathering in the dugout in tears when we watched Hogan's speech about our season was going to come to an end and we weren't sure if we were going to return. Um, just a lot of devastation in general and um, the girls were determined from the beginning of the season that this was going to be our year and that we were going to go all the way um, and they did exactly that so we ended up 14 and 0 with first undefeated, undefeated. yes our first undefeated season um, we won the north Bay side which i believe was also a first and then we earned our back-to-back -back regional championship now, since you were 14 going into the season i have to ask were the expectations for this type of season did you expect bayside championship maybe a little further well, to be honest with you, our ultimate goal was just to stay healthy and, and play a season. So we were thrilled that we got that chance. And then the state championship wasn't even in the picture for us initially. Okay. Um, it was just going to be a Bayside championship. So when we learned the news of the state championship and that we were going to be able to take that journey again, um, we we had very high expectations that we would end up back at that, at that okay. same level. Of you knew you were good. We knew we were good. Okay, yeah, all yeah, right. No you, you don't have to be modest. No, You're a state no championship. Now, tell you, so you won the Bayside. You were 14 and 0. Yes. Right. Tell me about the playoffs. What? Where did you? Who did you have to beat to get that championship? Um, ultimately, so we won our sectional championship, which is now the regional championship. We beat Ken Island, no, Parkside. We beat Ken Island, and then we beat Parkside. And then we moved on to the region where we played um, Eastern Tech. And then we played South Carroll for the regional, um, for the to get to the state championship. And then we played Calvert. Okay. Any special shout? I know you want to make shout outs. If you're wanting to name every single player on the team, manager, a parent, I don't care. Any special shout outs you'd like to give it to yes, the team? Yes, I have to give a shout out to my assistant coach, Shanna Corder. Um, we've had the best time coaching together. Not only is she a great coach um, to work with, but she's also one of my very dear friends. Um, and then we also just received news of the North Bayside title. So our center fielder, Tristan Stewart, received co player. Um, Co-player of the year honors. Our pitcher, Cameron Whiteford, received pitcher of the year honors. And then we had Brianna Athey and Bell Fields as first team selections and Riley Jordan as a second team selection. Now, the, is, the good news, I hope, is do you have most of the team coming back next year or part of it? So we lose six. So okay, that's going to be a big hit to us. We do have talent, absolutely, um, in our underclassmen. But losing those seniors is certainly going to be a huge um, role to fill. Well, you're too modest and kind to say it, but I'm, I'm cheering from back to backs, okay? okay. Then, then we're going to change all the rules. Okay, so you won this. What day did you actually win the state championship? It was Friday, June 18th. So it's Friday. You're coming home in a bus. You're as happy as you can be. And then you're calling your colleague over here and saying, no pressure, coach. It's <laughs> lacrosse's turn. Now, how did lacrosse do this year? Uh, lacrosse was also undefeated. We uh, ended up uh, after our state title 12-0, and but our regular season was 7-0. and We took the North Bay side. And um, same, same thing, just the, these girls persevered all season long. Uh, we did our very, very best, did all that we could to stay on the field, and uh, girls were dedicated. Um, we got through uh, our seniors graduating and uh, having senior week, and they came right. back. They came back to play for their team and their teammates. I mean, everyone forgets. School was over, am I That's correct? Right. Yeah, I mean, everyone's forget. thinking Ocean City, senior week, and the heck, uh, teachers, books, and all that stuff, all of a sudden, we got to play sports. That's right. And we didn't stop them from going. We didn't want to take anything else away from the seniors. They'd lost so much already. Okay. So they got to go, and then they got to come back. So it was the perfect ending okay. for them. I'm going <laughs> to ask you both, and we'll come back to lacrosse. 
Besides, I mean, are we able to, let me ask this question, are we able to practice every day with the COVID problems, with the school, some people doing virtual? How did that all work out with softball? And then I'll go to lacrosse. Okay, um, so at first, um, the restriction primarily was the mask, and we had to practice with the mask unless yeah, we were involved mask, in the play, okay. unless it was a game situation, um, the girls could remove their masks. Um, other than that, we had the distancing, but we didn't have to end up wearing masks in any of our games, and it didn't hinder our practices. Okay, how about lacrosse? Same, same thing, thing. Same um, thing. masks every day outside. The girls did great. Um, they were allowed to take them off for vigorous activity, which uh, there was a lot of that for lacrosse um, <laughs> in preseason. So a um, little uh, give and take. You get to take your mask off, but you're going to be running a lot. And um, all the running they did paid off for them. They, um, they were workhorses, and it all ended up showing up in those uh, late season games. Okay, now I'm going to ask you the same thing next year, looking good, a lot of people back, a lot of people gone. How's lacrosse looking for women? Yes, we'll be reloading. Okay. Jeff Straits in the audience here. I think we're going to probably do this again, Jeff. I get it. Okay. <laughs> Ladies, I just want to say this. I've lived here 40, almost 45 years. The community is extremely proud of what you've done, hadn't been done for 50 years, and a great role model for the young women, right? If I'm a little league coach, I'm just singing your praises, right? More kids are going to come out for softball and lacrosse. I know you compete seasons with athletes, but we won't <laughs> talk, okay? And you also sent a good message to all the young women, women head coaches, right? And you're a great role model. So thank you very much. And good luck on uh, June 20th, 2022. Let's hope we're back here, okay? We'll do this again. Sounds good. Okay? And again, congratulations. Thank, thank you. John, before we go, tell me about this big parade coming up Monday. So on Monday at 630, we're going to have a parade through the town of Centerville uh, to celebrate both of these teams and, and the women that were on this journey. Um, and so at 630, we'll be going through uh, leaving the high school going down by the Centerville Police Department and then up to the Satico and uh, back to Queen Anne's County High School. Okay, and again, that's Monday at 6.30. Everybody's invited. Everybody's invited. Okay. Come on out, turn the green, town green and gold. Coaches, you're practicing your Queen's wave. You got this down, ready to wave to the crowd. Okay, <laughs> all right. Something like that. <laughs> well, look, thank, again, congratulations on being state championships, to uh, winning the state championships, and all of your athletes. And again, thank you for watching QAC TV 7. We hope to see you Monday at the parade and give these young women a cheer for an outstanding job. My name's Fred McNeil. Thank you for your time. My time's up, and we're going to see you next time.